Chainsaws and other machines may dominate forestry, but the human-powered crosscut saw still has a basic appeal. Pushed and pulled through the trunks of trees, its jagged blade can handle any job. That is, until the person operating it runs out of gas. Making a crosscut saw is an exact science that dates back centuries. At this factory, they make these saws the old-fashioned way, mostly by hand. It's a nod to a time when these saws were at the forefront of history, helping to clear the way for railways and settlements. With guillotine blades, a worker first trims a steel rectangle along the lines measured and marked onto it. The trimming gives it a distinctive taper and establishes the correct dimensions. This particular saw is a one-person model, so it's about three feet long. Using a punch cutter, the worker carves gullets in the steel. These are the valleys between saw teeth through which sawdust and debris are cleared. He cuts one gullet every inch. He then cuts the teeth, three between each gullet. This pattern is known as the Great American Tooth. It's designed to cut medium to hardwoods across the grain without snags. He hammers each tooth to bend it and alternates the direction of the bends. One up, the next down. This is called setting the teeth. And the result is protruding teeth that cut more efficiently. He files each tooth, working from the bottom up to the tips, and sharpens those tips to a point. It takes about a half hour to give this steel blank its cross-cutting edge. A worker then connects the blade to a power source. He centers a stencil of the company logo on the saw, and then applies liquid electrolyte to the exposed metal within the stencil. He turns on the power, and the electrolyte conducts the current to burn the logo into the metal. A computerized router carves a piece of beech into the pistol-shaped handle. This software-driven tool also drills holes for installing the blade. The computerized system is quicker and more precise than manual carving. An employee then cuts a slot in the handle to fit the saw. He sands the edges of the handle until it's smooth. He then inserts the cross-cut saw blade into the handle. It's a tight fit, but to more solidly entrench it, he drills through the holes in the wood handle to make corresponding holes in the metal blade sandwiched within it. He inserts screws into the handle, securing the blade to it. He tightens the screws as much as possible. And this one-person saw is now complete. A two-person cross-cut saw is crescent-shaped and longer to cut through bigger trees. The teeth are also more substantial with deep pitches between them. Sawdust will be expelled through these deep pitches, so there's no need for gullets in this particular cutting edge. Once the teeth have been cut, a worker places socket fittings on each end of the saw. He pounds in rivets to secure the fittings to the blade. These fittings will be used to install a different kind of handle known as a fist grip which is more suitable for a two-person saw. It's essentially a wooden dowel that just slides into the socket fitting. It has taken about an hour to make this cross-cut saw. Wielded with force, it will cause mighty trees to fall, proving that this low-tech tool can still cut it on the job site. <laughs>